This is Mulligan Stew, the podcast. Music, film, food, and wine. Coming up in the next couple of weeks, the Landriff Brothers, the Small Glories, Mary Gauthier, the Harpoonist in the Axe Murderer, Conbrio, Donovan Woods, and in two weeks' time, on September the 20th, Robbie Robertson, who is celebrating the 50th anniversary of the band, their second album, the documentary Once Were Brothers about the band, which opened the Toronto International Film Festival, a prestigious spot. Also, he is launching the soundtrack for the Martin Scorsese film The Irishman. And finally, and really most importantly, a new album. I believe it's his sixth or seventh solo album. It's called Cinematic, with an S. And it's making all sorts of noise, and there's only two tracks out so far. One is with Van Morrison. Our guest this week, Augie Myers. No matter what recording studio he was in, or no matter what stage he was on, Augie Myers was never going to be the star of the show. But if you asked the stars of the show, they would turn to the microphone or you and say, Augie Myers is the star here. He started with Doug Somm as the Sir Douglas Quintet. They were 12 years old when they started to play. They toured the world. And then when that string ran out, then they formed the Texas Tornadoes with Flaco Jimenez and Freddie Fender. He played with Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan specifically asked for Augie Myers to be in the studio with him for Time Out of Mind and Love and Theft. He worked with John Hammond and Tom Waits on their absolutely amazing album called Wicked Grin. The tunes you will remember him for, being the pianist and the vox player in the band, would be Mendocino, She's About a Mover, and on and on and on. It's that South Texas sound that he brings, San Antonio sound. We lost Doug Somm in 1999, and Augie's going to talk about that. As a matter of fact, right at that moment, you could feel the sorrow in his voice. You could hear it. They were great friends, but he's carried on. He has a solo career now. He's gone on to work with Amos Garrett, Gene Taylor, Towns Van Zant, Raul Malo, Tom Waits, of course. And his new album is called I Know I Would Be Happy If Myself Wasn't Here. <laughs> it's Augie Myers. There's some stories to be told. Let's get to them. Okay, let me start this with Augie Myers. It goes like this. I'm a young disc jockey. I'm in Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm trying to get back to Vancouver. I'm trying to make enough noise in Regina that somebody notices in Vancouver and hires me back to my hometown. One day, I'm asked if I would hook up with the Sir Douglas Quintet because they needed diversion on the road. And so I hooked them up with scooters, motor scooters, little tiny Shriner type motor scooters. And they trashed four of those five scooters but we ran over some people's lawns. <laughs> I remember that lady sitting up on the porch. What's going on? With you? you were there, man. I can't. I tell the people that story, and they don't believe it, man. It was. That was my lasting impression of the Sir Douglas Quintet. It was fun back in those days. That's how long it's taken me to get another microphone in front of you. How are you, man? Six, 66. 66. Yes. Absolutely. Man, we're still here. That's astonishing, considering what, what's gone down. Uh, but I've been able to follow you through your music. I especially watched what Doug Somm was up to because I just want I just thought what he was doing was going to be different. It was. I wanted him to be happy with his music as well. And then you started to show up with various projects. Did you run Sir Douglas as far as you could? Well, me and him grew up when we were 12 years old together. You know, he'd come to my mama's grocery store to get uh, baseball cards. My mama had them in gum, five, five 
baseball card and a pack of gum for a nickel. And she had about 25 boxes in the back. She said, look in the back, we got them all. So we take them apart, and he'd bring some that he had extra, and they were like wrinkled. And, and we, uh, my mama said, Junior, you can't do that. And I said, we just did, Mama. I said, nobody can. We didn't take the gum. We just tr- traded a little you know, baseball card. That's how he got his best. And he said, man, I play guitar. And I said, I play a little piano and guitar. You know, he said, well, let's get together. So that's the 1952, you know, we went all the way up till uh, he passed away, which November will be 20 years. 20 years. When, when he passed on. 1999. Me, when, when, we passed, when he passed on, me and Freddie Fender was in Arizona playing a show with, with Freddie. And my son called me and said, Dad, what are you doing? I said, getting ready to eat hamburger. He told me. I might start crying, but I miss him. I still do. I mean, you'd still be playing. Oh, yeah. He called me Boogie, and I called him, uh, and, and Freddie used to call him Chicken Drip because <laughs> his hair was real straight, and it was sweat, and he'd just drip on. He said, you look like chicken feathers with that. And he said, we're going to name you Chicken Drip. I know that you wanted to, and actually it was an interesting trick uh, Sir Doug did in that we thought it was a, maybe a British invasion band. Some people did. Some, some guys who were playing the music, they didn't know. But you, ha- you were working on a sound. It's not like you planned it. That's just the, what you, how you heard rock and roll. It just, it, just, it just happened. You know, I owned the first Vox organ in America back in 1964. And uh, I called him Mr. Chuck Woods at the music show. I said, I want one of these. I saw it in the magazine. Why? Because the, the keys were different colors back and forth. And so he said, I can get one out of England. It's going to take you three or four months. Was it the sound you were after? No, I was just, it was uh, black and white keys were different. And so I said, I want one of these. It's just different. And so I ordered one, and he said, it's going to cost a lot of money, Augie. I said, how much? He said, $285 with freight. Back then, it was a lot of money, 64 So I said, let me have one. So Doug said, man, this is different. Let's play. So we went in the studio. And there was this girl dancing at this club we called the Blue Note. We played every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. He always, he always worked it into lyrics as well. Yes. And this chick was dancing, and he said, man, she's a body mover. And so we went in the studio and touched. She's a body mover. And no record company taking it because it was risque saying she's a body mover in 1965. So we changed this. She's a body mover. A lot of people don't know, but that's that's a true story. And so we came out, and Huey Moe was our manager. We cut our stuff. To, we cut a whole album in two days. We each got 25 bucks. He said, yeah, we're stars. Wow. <laughs> wow. You know? And he said, Brother, he said, in six months, it's going to be a big big fucking record for you. Excuse me for saying big record. That's the way he talked to you. And so uh, six months later, we were on the road as a Sir Douglas Quintel. And he almost said, y'all got to get an English name. Well, Doug was Doug, so Doug said, I'm going to call him Sir Douglas. And I said, well, we got five of us in the band. will be the Quintet. So that's how it started. And I remember we went to England that year, and George Harrison and John Lennon came up to see us at the Ready, Steady, Go television show to say, Hey, man, uh, we can't get our organ sound like you did. <laughs> and I said, why? You got Vox organs here. That's where I got mine. He said, no, but they had a continuous echoplex tape for their reverb. And I said, well, I got a super reverb here. And they played it, and they said, this is bloody good. So uh, he said, we got to get some of these. I mean, three weeks later, and all in England was nothing but super reverb box organs you know so it was an amazing time yes it was it was it was a beautiful time and it still is but you know freddie's gone and doug's gone but i'm still hanging in there and every day uh, i'll be honest when i get on stage i say hey doug be there for me you play for doug i do augie myers i've been playing the texas tornadoes lost super seven the solo albums um but i keep coming back to doug psalm's music is there a favorite album? I've got mine. I'll, I'll, I'll trade you titles. I uh, mean, I've got a lot of them. I guess it's, you know, uh, over the year, Mendocino was our second. Well, we had the first one uh, was, you know, She's About a Mover and Rain, Rain. And we got popped, you know, we, for two drugs in Texas. And we, we couldn't leave Texas for, well, five years. Well, three years, that gave us for five years, and they brought it down to three. But we were facing seven to ten years in the penitentiary for two drugs. Two, two joints back in those days. We had to cut our hair. We couldn't leave Texas. It was bad, but we still snuck out and played. That's why I came to Canada. <laughs> I mean, it was great, man. You know, then, then I had a song called Hey Baby Kept I Sold that Atlantic bought, and uh, they didn't do nothing with it. And I said, I want my contract back. I said, I'll never forget. Jerry, I went with him because Jerry Wexler was a friend of ours. He said, man, you, uh, you can get your contract back. you got to give us all your money back that we gave you. 
which was 50 grand back then. I said, yeah, I got it. And so, so I said, I'm out of my contract. He said, no, but you got to buy everything in the product we have, which was $17,800. So I had to go to the bank again. Boy, I was broke, buy money and get my contract back. And Doug called and said, hey, let's start this Tex-Mex group. Warner Brothers wants us. So we did the Texas Tornado. And this guy here was became part of our Texas Tornado. Mr. Max Baca was playing Vajo with for about 10 years till he got real famous. Now he's got his own group. And I still love this man. I love the fact you can play with your friends. With what? You can play music with your friends. Oh, yeah. That's, we're all friends, you know. In fact, the, 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 the Sir Douglas Quintet, all the band that they still play with me back home that are still alive, the original bass player and drummer from the Sir Douglas Quintet, we're still playing together. And the horn player, one, Rocky Morales, passed on. But, you know, we're, everybody said, man, y'all are so tight. Y'all ever rehearsed? And I said, well, we did about 25, 30 years ago, you know. You did get some, uh, uh, asked to sit in on, on some sessions. Uh, the two that come to mind, of course, are Bob Dylan's Time Out of Mind and Love and Theft. What was the experience like? Well, I met Bob in 63, and we become friends. And he always, we just got on, he called us a garage band. He said, we're his favorite garage and that, band. And that was, that, that's an honor. Yes, we, but we thought it was a put down at first. You know, man, why is he calling us a garage band, you know? We, Anyway, but uh, we become good friends, and he called me up. He said, bring your magic box, you know, to Florida and New York where we did the albums, and we, we did them, you know. Bob, Bob is a very intellectual person, you know, and he's, 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 got, he's got a saying to it, what, what he wants him, he's already thinking what he wants to do. He's heard it in his head. Yeah, he heard it in his head. And that, Doug was the same way, you know, and it, uh, even Tom Waits, I did an album with him. Wicked Grin. Yeah, Wicked Grin. Well, with, with John Hamm. John Hamm. John Hamm. And, and uh, I don't know, it was it was a great experience, you know, to play with all these people, you know, over the years. And, and I'm still playing. I just did a, oh, I don't know, uh, I can't even remember. The, uh, Glenn Campbell, I did stuff with him, Sweethearts of the Rodeo over the years. But, you know, it's just, it's fun playing with somebody else. And like Max, he I play on his records, he plays on mine. And, me and Flacco still playing together. We're doing a, a new album now. Max is on it. You know, new album? Yeah, but we're not the Tornadoes no more. We we'll call yeah. ourselves the Tornado Legends. <laughs> so we don't get sued. Okay, all right, man. It never ends. Yeah, I, never uh, I want to take you back to Wicked Grin. My baby's leaving town on the 219. Yeah. Uh, I, I love the fact that hey, it's, it's John Hammond, but I love the fact that Tom Waits uh, is asked by is con convinced by his wife to co go in there, be the producer, and then the songs start to show up. Yeah, that's a great session. That Wicked Grin. It, it was a good. I mean, we had uh, uh, a lot of different people on it, but it was a. How, how do you say? John was a, a acoustic artist by himself, and then he put this band together. Were, you know, we had a. Uh, Larry Taylor from Can Heat, you know, and, and Steve Hodges, and I think he played with Smash and Pumpkins, and Frank Carella, he played with Golden Earring, Radar Love, and me and Frank, I'm going to New York in, in September to play with his group, you know, so I just, I have my own group back and I play with different people. Last question, Augie, um, two things, do you hear the sound of your, uh, your Vox today, who's, who's using it, who's using the sound that we heard from you? Everybody, just about. <laughs> You know, I mean, so many people come to me and says, uh, people ask me yesterday, where's your Vox? And I said, they said, home. My original one, we, me and Doug were in Norway, and they went off the cliff, the road, an equipment truck, in the fjord, where they call it. It was sunk 15 feet deep. The time we got it out, it was all dilapidated. All our equipment was. I got three that I used for parts, and Billy Gibbons bought four of them out of Nashville, an old furniture store that went, got, the, the, the old man died and the son said, man, I got all this old Vox stuff here. Billy Gibbons bought it like 50 cents on the dollar. He said, oh yeah, I got a Vox if you want to buy it. And I said, yeah. So he sold it to me. Does music still give you the same buzz as it always has? Okay. And how long do you want to ride this pony? Till the day I can't do it no more, I guess. You know, somebody asked me, when are you going to retire? And I said, from what? <laughs> you know, I love what I do. I'm 79 years old now. You know, I got a new album, my personal album coming out again. And I got one, it's just me and the piano. And I got cellos and violins. No bass, drums, and guitar. On. And I'm going to the studio when I come back from Europe. And I got three more songs to finish and it'll be out. It's going to be called Especially For You. And when's it coming out? Probably in, by May or June. I mean, next manager. Does Bob still call? Oh yeah, I talked to him. What's this? 
uh, back in April, I think it was. Uh, he, he, came, he was coming towards Texas, but I wasn't going to be there. Last question. I really, the last question is about him because you can give me insight to this. There'll come a day when you and I wake up and there'll be no more Bob. You just don't, don't, you don't know, you can't, the people, they're dropping like flies. They are, I'm gonna tell you something. Since May until now, I've lost seven friends. You know, Dr. John died, Uh, you know, uh, just different people I've I've played with over the years. My my old bass player from 1958 passed away. He was 63 years old. You know, I just had a heart attack. I'm not afraid of dying. I just don't want to be there when it happens. You know, what can I say? You know, I'm being honest, you know. But I mean, what do we lose when we lose Bob? We, lo- we lose a, a great portion of American music, you know, from way back. You know, he, he started out when he was doing his uh, acoustic stuff, and then he went into more electric and things. But we're going to lose a, a great American po- a poet, that you have to say, you know. Because he, a lot of his songs were poets. I mean, they were uh, poems more so. And he put words to them earlier. He told me one time, he said, I write a lot of poetry. Back he told me, and I said, he said, then I put them in the music later, <laughs> you know. And he calls them, he said, I got a bunch of sketches, Augie. And, then, and I said, uh, really? He said, listen to this one. And it was, you feel my love. And uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Garth Brooks did it just like he did. And he said, I, how would you do it? How would you and Doug do that if y'all were doing this? I said, well, we wouldn't need two drummers, three guitar players and all this. I said, would you write it on bass? I mean, on guitar or piano? He said, I wrote it on the piano. I said, then play piano. I said, when I write my songs on the guitar, I sing, record them on the guitar. If I wrote it on a piano, I record it on a piano. That's where I got the feeling from. He said, yeah. So he, we did it that way, and it turned out. And he said, thank you, man. You know, But coming from him, that meant a lot to me, asking me what I thought, how he should do it. You know, Live long, play well, have a good time. Hey, man. Thank you, Augie. Thank you. His name is Augie Myers, and he was the keyboardist with the Sir Douglas Quintet and the Texas Tornadoes with Flaco Jimenez and Freddie Fender. He has his own solo career now, but you can find him on Bob Dylan's Time Out of Mind, Love and Theft, and John Hammond's and Tom Waits Wicked Grin album. We thank Augie Myers for his time on this planet and the music that he's making. Up ahead, the Landreth Brothers, the Small Glories, Mary Goche, the Harpoonist and the Axe Murderer. From San Francisco, Combrio. Donovan Woods, amazing songwriter. And in two weeks' time, Robbie Robertson from the band. Thank you for subscribing to Mulligan's to the podcast, Music, Film, Food, and Wine on Spotify, Google Play, or Apple Podcasts. Enjoy. <laughs>